I really wish I got to read Monster Blood 4 before I decided to read this book because of course, knowing my luck, I read Little Shop of Hamsters before I got to read Monster Blood 4. And then I realized that, oh yeah, this is an homage to Monster Blood. But obviously, I read it first. And same thing happened with Welcome to Dead House. I read Welcome to Dead House after I read Zombie Halloween. And Zombie Halloween is an homage to that book. So that is all to say that I am terrible with timing. Yes, I suck with it. But what's new? Uh, just like with this review that it took a very long time to make because I'm bad at scheduling my videos. But hey, man, the review is now here. And it is for... Horrorland. That's right. This is going to be my first Horrorland review. Goosebumps Horrorland, Little Shop of Hamsters. Now, what is this book about? Well, before I do that, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe down below if you so enjoyed. And make sure to like the video as well and comment down below your own thoughts and opinions. I have other Goosebumps content on this channel if you want to check it out. It's in some playlists. And you can also just check out the content freely. And yeah, be sure to check it out. Let's get into this review. So I'm going to be talking about Little Shop of Hamsters. Now, what is this book about? So, because this is in Goosebumps Horrorland... Um, the beginning of this book actually kind of threw me off because it actually takes place in Horrorland for the first section of the book. So you have the main character named Sam, and Sam is with his friend Lexi, and they are at Horrorland currently. And they're sort of checking out the amusement park, seeing some of the rides, and they end up getting hungry. They go to a restaurant where they order some shrimp, and it turns out to look like, I guess, leeches with wings. And let's say they may or may not have a very disturbing uh, experience with those things and the person who's cooking them. So I don't want to spoil that because it, that was actually, I think, my favorite scene in this whole book, um, which says a lot because, uh, well, uh, that, that, that doesn't even, that's not even the main storyline of the book. That's a Horrorland thing. But I really did enjoy that part. Uh, it was very disturbing, very disgusting. Um, so I think you guys like reading that portion. But they have that little uh, mishap going on. And they're like, all right, you know what? At this point, we should just leave. I don't know what's going on with Horrorland. And, you know, they decide, all right, let's go to this one antique shop before we leave. Um, and they go to Chiller House. Now, I believe Chiller, uh, Jonathan Chiller, is like the main antagonist of the second half of Horrorland. Um, so, yeah, this is Jonathan Chiller. And this is Chiller House. He runs his like antique toy shop. Um, so they head in there for some souvenirs, and when they're in there, um, they both pick up two different things. So, uh, they pick up, for Lexi, an Instagrow pet. Now, the Instagrow pet is this little spongy blue thing. Now, they don't know what it does, but, you know, she thinks it's pretty interesting. Obviously, back in the day, for some of you who were uh, old enough to remember, you used to have those little, like, solid, small, like, animals. Sometimes you get, like, crocodiles or... Uh, like snakes or something and you would get those little like rough ones and you'd put them in water and after three or four days it would keep expanding 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 and eventually you would have this giant like slinky snake or this giant crocodile you could hold up that would be inside of the water and it kind of taught kids how like you know animals grow up and they become larger and you know how they hatch and stuff so that was all pretty interesting as a kid so this is a play off of that Instagram. Um, and once you find out what it does, you'll know the direction this book is going, um, at least for somewhat of it. And Sam picks up a little uh, toy phone that spits out candy. And when it spits out candy, it's a really sour taste, but there's a little thing about it that it's very addicting. You know, as soon as he starts popping in his mouth, you know, he's addicted to eating it. And uh, he notices that when he gives this candy to other people uh, later on in the book, they feel the exact same way. So they leave Chiller House, obviously. He gives them a little horror, which I do like that line from Jonathan Chiller that take a little horror with you home. Uh, I, re I really did. That was a cool line. So they get home, and you kind of figure out more about Sam's life. So Sam is basically obsessed with getting a pet, but his parents are not ready to have a pet yet. You know, they have a Sam. They have his younger brother, and his younger brother is an absolute uh chaotic kid he causes a lot of trouble has a lot of energy he's all crazy and over the place so they don't really have time um to take care of a pet and if they do get a pet sam would need to prove that he's responsible enough to take care of it so he keeps wanting to advocate getting a pet um he really really wants to get one and you know one day he um goes to uh this hamster shop and in this hamster shop 
um, he discovers a guy named Mr. Fitz, I think, or Mr. Fritz. I think it's Mr. Fritz. He discovers a guy named Mr. Fritz, and Mr. Fritz has this huge, I guess you could call it like terrarium or enclosure. It's like eight feet tall and like 10 feet wide, and it's filled with hundreds of hamsters. So he's keeping hundreds of hamsters in this giant enclosure. And, you know, Lexi and Sam are shocked. They're like, what the heck is going on here? So they talk to Mr. Fritz and he explains that, you know, he's really interested with pets and running a, a pet shop and he decided he'd go with hamsters. So he's raising these hamsters, he's feeding them and he's thinking that, you know, um, you know, hamsters are what people need. There's gonna be a high demand for it. And, you know, Sam gets interested, you know, he plays with the hamsters for a little bit and he's like, you know what, I wanna get a hamster. Goes home, tries to convince his parents, they obviously say no. Um, and they try to test him saying, all right, you have to prove to yourself um, that you're responsible enough and prove to us in return that you can handle a pet. So he tries doing that, and a mishap happens during dinner time, where Lexi's over for dinner, and the Instagrow thing that she bought at Horrorland ends up falling in some water, and it ends up expanding to gigantic sizes. The sponge ends up instantly growing, 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 and expanding to the point that it basically fills up their entire dining room, and it's about to break through the ceiling seemingly. Um, until it stops and then it shrinks back down. So they're freaked out. They're like, well, what, what type of toy is this? And then even the parents were like, where did you get that from? And they're like, hey, we got it from Horrorland. So they start realizing that not everything may be the way it seems. And with the little candy dispenser, he realizes that his brother is, uh, when he gives some candy to his brother, his brother gets very addicted by the candy. And it's to the point that he starts growling and acting animalistic towards getting some more candy. So obviously Lexi and Sam are realizing that these souvenirs they got may not be all it seems. There might be more to it. And he returns to the hamster shop. He manages to secure a job for Mr. Fritz and he starts working with the hamsters. And that's when the shenanigans of this book ramp up because he accidentally gives some of that candy that invoked those feelings within his brother to the hamsters and they eat it and they start acting more and more vicious as the days continue on that he works there. And it turns into a giant mess once you get to the climax because let's just say those two souvenirs were obviously there for a reason and it ends up going insane. There may be growing involved. There may be uh, violent tendencies of animals involved. Uh, there's a lot going on here. So yeah, that's basically the synopsis of this book. Uh, there's also the climax, which is uh, all I will say is an homage to Monster Blood 2. I read that recently. And this is basically just an homage to Monster Blood 2. Um, maybe done a little bit better, a, a little bit better in this book, um, which is not a high bar considering what Monster Blood 2 was. But yeah, it's a little bit better than uh, what that ended up becoming. And there's also a twist. There's a twist regarding what's happening um, with the hamster shop and maybe is it really Sam's fault that this stuff is happening? Is it something else? You find out in the climax twist, and then you get that twist ending. Um, I will have to say that the climax twist that you get is very goofy, and I really did not like that as much. Um, but the the twist ending itself was decent. It, it made enough sense. So yeah, that's basically the synopsis of this book. So how do I feel about it? Um, this book is, I would say, average to decent. Um, it's not, like, in terms of writing, it's not really all there. Like, if I look at it um, at face value, the writing's not all there. It's kind of just meandering in a lot of places. Because um, not a lot happens in the book. You know, they go to Horrorland, they bring back these souvenirs. You know, he wants a pet, he really wants a pet. Goes to his hamster shop, starts working there. And his own mistakes seemingly cause a lot of problems. Um, but even though it's not the best writing, I will say I had a fun time. Um, I think I, I like the, the goofiness involving this storyline to the point where I had an issue a little bit with Monster Blood too, just because the characters were so like obnoxiously written, especially compared to the first book, seeing some stuff they did was so annoying and some of the writing involved, like by the end of Monster Blood 2, you really felt like, what the hell happened? Like, you're just like, what What did I read? Um, here in Little Shop of Hamsters, 
they own up to the goofiness and absurdity kind of off the rip and the characters are not that bad Lexi's okay and you know Sam is not like you know, he's just sort of an average character, so it ends up being a little better than what Monster Blood 2 ended up being. So I did say I have to enjoy this book. I had a fun time with it. Um, the climax twist kind of takes down points in this book even further because it's very forced in terms of who or who could be a potential villain. Um, it kind of shoehorns the potential villain thing for last moment and it's done in this really cartoonish, absurd way, which I guess you could say lines up with the book, but it felt really shoehorned, so I wasn't a fan of that. Um, and then the twist ending um, kind of, you know, makes this book's uh, main kind of villainry uh, a little bit more important. Um, it makes it a little bit better because the twist ending actually does make sense and I think is a pretty good twist ending for this book. So yeah, I'd probably rate it um, a 7 out of 10 or a 7.2 out of 10 um because i think this book is decent but when i give a 7 out of 10 or higher than a 7 i had a fun time with it so is it the greatest thing in goosebumps obviously not but um i think i would recommend reading it i recommend reading it because i think you would have enjoyment reading this book you might have fun with the absurdity and for those who read monster blood 2 you might find this as a better version of monster blood 2 and you might end up actually enjoying this take of it um as opposed to cuddles here you have uh, hundreds of hamsters and they're taken in a much different direction and the ending is an homage to that and ends up being i would say cooler than what that one ended up being um so yeah uh, yeah, I'd give it a 7 out of 10, 7.2 out of 10. Um, if this review happened to see them all over the place, again, there is not much plot line to this book. It is kind of just secluded to these two places of, hey, something's happening at home, and then mostly the pet shop, and it's very direct to the point. Um, so yeah, that's it for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you like this content, be sure to check out some of my other videos down below. Um, I have a whole playlist regarding the different series that I've covered so far, and I have a bunch of reviews, so check those out. You might enjoy them. Um, and yeah, I have more reviews to come. I have a bunch of books backlog that I need to review, but I like doing that just so I never want to run out of content because I always read, I think like if I have like 10 reviews out, I'll have read like 20 or 22 books in total. So I'll have 10 or 12 books left that I have to review just because I don't want to get to the point where I catch up with my reviews and then I don't have books that I've read. You guys have to wait for me to read and catch up to a book um, to get content out. So that's usually how I operate. So yeah, I have books that I have to review. I'll have some more reviews coming out. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed, uh, be sure to again, subscribe, like, and comment down below your own thoughts and opinions. Do you agree? Do you disagree with me about this book? I've heard a lot of people think this book is pretty fun too, despite its kind of average writing. So I think a lot of you guys might agree. But hey, if you really, really enjoyed the book, if you loved it, let me know. If you hated this book, uh, let me know why down below too. And you might open up uh, my opinion about it. So yeah, that's all it is for today. Deuces. This is why you don't trust souvenirs from crazy amusement parks, people. I mean, I don't even trust the food, all right? The last time I got food poisoning, that was a horror book in itself.